Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful Saturday. We thank God for Saturday. And we thank God for this weekend. By the grace of God and by the blessings that the Lord is renewing every morning, we receive this day with thanksgiving. Brethren, it is a blessing. It is a privilege. It is by the masses of God that we receive every new day. And you know what, brethren? God's masses are renewed every morning. And therefore, even today, we find the masses of this day and we thank God for his masses. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his faithfulness. Remember what David prayed, that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and now he shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. This is my prayer. And I believe that it should be your prayer that God's goodness and mercy continue to be our portion every moment and every day of our lives. But we also need to make a resolve. To make a resolve to remain, to remain in the paths of God, to remain in the presence of God, to remain in the house of the Lord, to remain in God's service, to remain in God's will, and to remain to fulfill God's purposes. And therefore, this morning, I invite you, even as we share God's word, that we may be able to find God's goodness, God's mercy, even for this particular day. And may the blessing of God and the opportunities and every favor and everything that is meant and established in heaven as a blessing for us, that it may come to pass, because that is the will of God. That's why Jesus said that the disciples should remember to pray, may your kingdom come, may your kingdom come, May your will, your perfect will, be done here on earth. May the kingdom of God, his reign and authority, reign over every situation in your life, reign over everything that matters to you, the circles of your personal life, the circles of your family, the circles of your concerns, and everything that you trust God for even this day. May the kingdom come. May the reign of God take charge. And may the will of God and only the perfect will of God be done about your life and about my life. And therefore, may we find God's blessings even as we start this day. Now, brethren, yesterday, yesterday we picked up a proof of our salvation, understanding the significance of Easter. And one of the things that we talked about, the significance of the Easter story, the death, the resurrection of Jesus is about knowing that our salvation is sure because Jesus died and resurrected. Our salvation is sure. And I just can't be able to nail it even as we, uh, we pick up uh, the, the theme of the day. And you remember in the book of Acts chapter, chapter, in the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 11 and following, this was a testimony that was being given. And you know the disciples say, Jesus is the stone, the, the, the stone you have built us rejected, which has become the cornerstone. I want to repeat that. Jesus is the stone you build us rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Verses 12. Salvation is found in no other else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It's only through Jesus that we find true salvation. And yesterday we said, it is amazing that our salvation is proven and credible because Jesus died and paid the cost, but also is elected to show that he is true. They give us salvation, not only for the living, but even the dead who have died in faith and in Christ. They are proven that they have salvation. Today, I just want to pick up the theme of the day. And the theme of the day is the fact and the truth that Jesus, death and resurrection, gave us power over every manner of sin. You know what? That the sin have no more dominion over us. Through Christ, he was able to break the citadel of Satan, and he was able to set us free from the chains and the bars of imprisonment of sin. Because this is what the Bible says. 
that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Remember, prophet Ezekiel also told the children of Israel as he was reminding them about obedience to the, to the commands of God and how they need to live with God. And he said, you know what? The soul that sinneth shall die. The soul that sinneth shall die. And therefore, if sin bring forth death, then the only thing that we needed, we needed the, 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 we needed a solution of the power of sin that bring a death that it may be able to be brought into sub to, to be subdued that we may be able to find life in eternity. And you know what Jesus did on the cross when he took on his body every manner of our sins and he was crucified. And by the way, though he proclaimed and said, it is done, it is finished. And therefore, the debt of our sins have been paid in full. But one thing was to prove is because if he just died and never resurrected, then that meant how the Bible talks about that the, 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 the wages of sin is death. The truth is, then he was overcome and overwhelmed by the sins he carried, even the sins of the world. But his resurrection now proves that he has been able to overcome. Yes, he took our sin on himself, but he was able to overcome and bring down the power of sin that is death. And he was able to overcome and be able to deliver life eternal. Even whoever comes and believes in Jesus Christ, he has life and have it in abundance. That is the truth and the fact that by the resurrection of Jesus, he was not only defeated and, over, and, and overwhelmed at the cross because of our sins, but you know what? His resurrection is a proof that he has power over the power of sin. Now, let me lead a scripture here that can be able to drive this so that we can be able to bring it to speed in understanding of the same. In the book of Romans, and I want to read uh, verses chapter 6, and I uh, want to read verses, um, verses 4. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, We are therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You know what? Because he took to himself the life of sin and every sin of the human race, then he had to take the punishment because the wages of sin is death. Then he died. But dying was like any other human who died because of sin. And there was no remedy. But because he was raised, that's why Paul says that now Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we made to live a new life. In other words, for us to find new life over the power of sin, it is true that is a election of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, brethren, the truth and the fact is, Jesus was able to break the power of sin. Now, that does not mean, brethren, that we are not going to be tempted. I want to remind us, temptations will come. And even the life we are living and the world we are living is full of every manner of temptation from the last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, the last even of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the things that we see and especially what we call the pride of life. Every manner of persecution, even persecution will come on our way. Even hatred will come on our way. We are going to suffer bitterness because it's like sometimes we are angered by the people that we love out of betrayal, out of, call it. We are going to be able to be tempted in every way. But you know what happened? When Jesus is elected, he did not remove temptation. But what he did, he was able to break and destroy the power of sin. In other words, that sin have no dominion over us. In other words, sin does not by any means dominate and take dominion over us that we can be, not be able to find freedom. But he broke the power of sin that we can be able to manage 
and overcome seed. That's why, brethren, when temptations come, we have their power through the grace of God to say no to every manner of ungodliness. How are we able to say no? And we are able to overcome temptations and every manner of sin that is presented before us by the enemy or by the world that we live in. It is not only it is not because of our human nature that is in nature is sinful, but it's by, by the grace of God through the power of resurrection, through Christ that broke the dominion and the power of sin. Allow me also to push it further by bleeding to you and leading the same uh, Romans, but chapter 8, and I want just to lead uh, verses, um, Romans chapter 8 and verses 2. This is what the Bible says. Let me just leave from verses 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives light has set you free from the law of sin and death. Let me repeat verses 2. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and the law of death. You know, the law of sin is about wages of sin is death. But you know what Jesus has done? By his death and resurrection, he has broken the law of sin and he has been able to give us the free gift, the free gift of eternal life through his death and resurrection. And therefore, the story of Easter, brethren, and the truth and the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus give us the power to overcome sin. And therefore, brethren, sin have no dominion over your life. Are you struggling with any manner of sin today? Do you feel as if you have been overwhelmed by any manner of sin or anywhere that you have been hooked and you found yourself into a kind of a pattern and a habit of repeating a particular sin and you really feel overwhelmed and it's like you're almost losing the ability and the capability to come out of the sin. I want to remind you, the power of Christ's resurrection. And I want to pray that the Lord may breathe to you the power of Christ's resurrection, the power that resurrected Jesus and was able to overcome even the power of sin. May you receive that power that is able to give you the grace that you may be able to subdue every manner of sin and, 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 and temptation. And you can be able to break from the bondage and the dominion of sin. Sin have no power over you, my brother and sister. Christ was able to pick it on our behalf. He broke the dominion of sin by his death on the cross and his election. And therefore, no, no sin. That have been that, that have that is able to continue keeping us and subduing us into slavery. Refuse the slavery of sin. Refuse the power of imprisonment of sin. It is broken, my brother and sister, and it is a fact. By the resurrection of Jesus, by the resurrection of Jesus, he was able to prove that he had been able to take power over the dominion of sin. May the Lord cost you grace. Even as you continue to walk in freedom, as Paul says, as you continue to walk in freedom from the law of sin to the law and to the grace of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.